Hello everyone, we're back. This is the section that I promised you. In, in the previous section, we just talked about slope in general. Um, but in this section, we're going to actually show how do you use the slope of a line, which now we know how to find from the previous section. How do you use the slope of a line to graph it? So this will give us an alternate method on how to graph lines. And I think I noticed this is ever, the most, most students' favorite method. It's really nice. It's kind of almost seems too nice. <laughs> Whereas, remember the previous method, um, you can choose whatever values you want for x and then find y, or you can choose whatever values you want for y and then find x. There's almost too much freedom, you know, and we're not used to that in math, so it scares a lot of people. But I think in this section, it's a lot better, so uh, it just gives you one method and you don't have to do any guessing or there's no freedom, it's just do this thing, and I think people like that. <laughs> so anyway, this section we're talking about the slope-intercept form of a line. So we'll see what that means, but yeah, like I said, the idea behind this section is, okay, we already know how to graph a line by finding two or three points and then plotting them. But in this section, we'll, sh we'll show how to use the slope. But you, don't, you can't just use the slope, you'll need slope and the y-intercept which we've seen before, but we'll have a kind of an alternate way to find it in this section. But you need those two things, which are actually kind of easier to find than what we found in previous sections. So they're not too bad once you see how to do it. Okay, let's see here. How about, we'll just jump into this. Just These, these examples are kind of gearing us up towards what we're going to be talking about. So give us an idea of how these are going to go. Let's look at example one here. It says, Last year, Gary spent $4,000 upgrading the local area network, or the LAN, for his computers, or sorry, his company's computer system. Now he plans to spend $3,000 every two years to upgrade his employees' laptop computers. So we've got kind of a column here on the left for how many years since he started the program. And then on the right, we have a column for how much is this costing the company and keep in mind that those numbers are, like it says, in thousands. So when you see this four, it really means $4,000, not $4. All right, so if, kind of keeping in mind, remember he said um, that last year he spent $4,000 uh, upgrading the network. So when it, the first ordered pair they give us, they said zero years since the start of the program. So that means, that must mean right when he started the program. No years have passed, he just started it. The cost was four, but 4000 which makes sense because it said it was right when he started the program he spent four thousand dollars okay and then from, from there every they said every two years so from here to here that's two years from here to here that's two years etc cetera, etc cetera. notice that the cost is going up by three thousand like the problem said from four to seven that's a difference of three but we're keeping in mind that these values are in thousands and then from seven to ten same thing ten to thirteen that's another increase of three and on and on and on so these are just giving you specific values or specific number of years since the start and then the cost in that year. Okay, so let's see. They want us to first find the slope of that line. So keep, I guess, and they said we could use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I guess that's what we're used to, huh? So we might as well, we might as well use that. And then, like in the last section, if you remember, we said you can actually choose any two ordered pairs in this table. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. So for me, I always pick the ones with the smallest numbers because I know I know no matter which ones I pick, it's going to work out. So I noticed the very first guy, 0, 4 is really nice, right? <laughs> and the second guy is pretty nice too, 2, two 7. But just like we said in the last section, keep in mind you can pick any two of these ordered pairs and this would work. You'd get the exact same slope. So don't feel like you have to always choose the first two or you always have to choose the smallest numbers. You're completely free to pick whichever ones you want. But all right, I'm calling those guys x1, y1, x2, y2. Let me label those guys so I don't, I don't mix it up. I'm going to call the top one x1, y1, and the bottom one x2, y2, and then start filling those into this formula here. So Okay, y2, that was 7 as I labeled it minus y1, that's 4, and then in the denominator we have x2, which is 2, subtract x1 is 0. Okay, if I subtract those guys, that's 3 over 2, or you could put 1.5, but I'll just leave it as 3 over 2. That's pretty good. 
All right, so we found the slope. The last thing they want us to do is kind of what's going to lead us into the, what this section's all about. They want us to use the slope and y-intercept of 0, 4 to graph the line. So they kind of, they gave this point, we already knew this point here, 0, 4, was a, an ordered pair from this graph because it was the very first row in the, in the table. But they're just reminding us, remember, that's, a, that's the y-intercept. Because if you remember, a couple sections back, we talked about graphing a line by finding the y-intercept and the x-intercept. And we said, whenever you have a point whose x value is 0, like we have in this point, that means it's the y-intercept. So it's just kind of calling it what it is. If your x value is 0, that's a y-intercept. All right, so we know the y-intercept. I'm going to plot that point, 0, 4. On this graph over here, where is it here? 0, 4 would be up 4 on the y-axis. So we got that. Um, and I could, you know, use a different ordered pair here to plot another point and then connect the dot, or connect the two points. But they want us to start using the slope because that's going to lead us into this, whatever what we're doing in this section. So our slope is 3 over 2. How am I going to use that to find another point? Well, remember in the previous section we saw if you have two points, the slope is going to be the rise or the change in the x values over the run. So if I want to, I can say, oh, the rise, that's 3, because that's the numerator of the slope, and the run is 2. So I'm going to go 3 upward, since rise means up, and then 2. I guess the thing is 2. Okay, 2 is a whole, or not a whole number, sorry. 2 is a positive number. And if I want to, I guess, remember, run means the horizontal distance. But if you're thinking, okay, wait, which way do I go horizontally? Do I go left or right? If you ever forget which way to go, like we'll see coming up is, I would say, which direction, left or right, is positive? Because 2 is a positive number. Well, if you look at the x-axis, if you go to the left on the x-axis, those are the negative numbers. But if you go to the right, those are positive numbers. You want, you're going to want to go right that direction. And we'll see more of this later, so it'll, it'll make more sense, I think. Um, but yeah, you're going to want to rise 3. And again, it's true because 3 is a positive number. That's why we're going upward as well. And then 2, the denominator, is a positive number also. So we're going to the right since the right is the positive direction on the x-axis. Okay, so from the y-intercept that we drew here, 0, 4, I'm going to go up 3. Let's see, 1, 2, 3. That would land me right at the level of 7. But I'm not going to make a point yet because I need to not only rise, I need to run 2. So once I go up 3, I'm going to go right 2. Then I'll make a point. There he is, this point here. And then I'll connect those dots, and that's the line. Nice, there we go. Beautiful. So keep in mind, yeah, when you have a slope, for example, the one we have, 3 halves, you have to not only rise, whatever the numerator tells you to rise, but you also have to run left or right, you know, depending if it's positive or negative. Um, run the number that the denominator tells you to run. So bef before you plot a point, you got to make sure you do both of those things. Go up or down, and then go right or left. Then you make a point. So I'll see this a lot in this section. If that kind of... You don't feel really comfortable with that. I think the more of these we do, the better we'll get at it. Okay, so let's see the next one here. Example two is just kind of more of the same, except there's no context. They don't give us an actual kind of word problem here. They're just giving us, in general, let's say the slope is this and the y-intercept is that. All right, let's see. We got the slope is 2 thirds, okay, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. So we're going to do like we did in the last one. We're going to first start out, you have to plot the y-intercept first. The y. And then you're going to use the slope to find another point. That's really the only way to do it. You have to start off with the y-intercept because if you start try to start off with the, the slope, you're not going to know where to start before you rise and run. So you really need to start off with a point, like the y-intercept that they, they give you. All right, let me plot that point. 0, negative 5 would be down here on the y-axis at negative 5. And then I'm going to rise and run. Okay, i got to keep this in mind. They told me that the slope is 2 thirds in this one. So 2 must be rise, and 3 must be run. And I keep in mind, too, that both of these numbers are positive, 2 and 3. So when I rise, that's the vertical direction. I think, okay, on the y-axis, up or down, which one is the positive, positive direction? It would be up. 
So I'm going to go up 2. And then the same thing with the run. Run is either left or right, depending on the number. Is it positive or negative? Well, 3 is positive, so I'm going to run the positive direction, which is to the right. OK. So from that y-intercept I drew at 0, negative 5, I'm going to go up 2 and then right 3. 1, 2, 3. I think it lands about right there. That's where that guy would be. Up 2, right 3. And then I'll connect the dots and I'll be done with that line. OK, looks good to me. And you notice, just to, you don't have to think about this, but just as a check, remember we said if you have a positive slope like we have, 2 thirds is positive, the line should be going upward from left to right. I always picture myself as a little person walking up the slope. If you have a positive slope, that means you're going upward, you're going up a hill. But if I had a negative slope, that would mean I'm going downward from left to right, like I'm walking down a hill. Okay, that one looks good. So let's see. Now we're going to get to, because there are most problems, they don't give you the slope and the y-intercept, like these, these past two examples that we were given. Most of the time they'll do more like, if you see over here on the right side, um, if they give you an equation of a line, what you're going to have to do is figure out the slope and the y-intercept yourself. So this next part is going to tell you, how do you go about and find the y-intercept and the slope? All right, so what does it say here? It says, notice that in an equation of a line such as, so here's just an example, y equals 2x plus 6. The y-intercept is 0, 6. Okay, why is that? Because if you remember from a couple sections back, you find the y-intercept by replacing x with 0. Because remember we said, whichever intercept you're trying to find, you let the other variable be 0. So if I'm trying to find the y-intercept, I'll let x equal 0. And you can kind of picture what would happen in this equation. Just imagine you put a 0 for that x. So it would be y equals 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 6. So the y-intercept is y equals 0 plus 6, y equals 6. So that's why the y-intercept is 0 comma 6 for that one. And you notice 6. Okay, where would that come from? That was just the number that was adding at the end of this equation, right? You had 2x plus whatever that number is adding at the end. Actually, that's always going to be your y-intercept. So it's kind of good to know. Yeah, whatever your equation looks like, y equals something x plus something, the number at the very end adding to x is going to be your y-intercept. Or, it's, you know, it's going to be the y-value of your y-intercept. Okay. So we got that. Now we, we know how to find the y-intercept now. It's always this number at the end of the equation. Not the, not the one connected to x, but the one kind of by itself. Okay. What else? Da -da 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 -da. Oops. There should be a 6 here. Sorry about that. Um, then the x-intercept... Let's see. The next part of it says the x-intercept would be negative 3, 0. Since replacing y with 0, remember that's how you would find the x-intercept. You let the other variable y equals 0. It would result in x equals negative 3. So why is that? If you, if you want to, we can kind of do that off to the side just to be sure that they're not making things up as they go along, right? So okay, if we want to find the x-intercept, we're going to take this equation and let the other variable y equals 0 and then solve for x. So I'm going to put a 0 where y was to try to find the x-intercept. But at this point, I have to actually solve for x. So I'm going to move the 6 over. All right, then it would be negative 6 equals 2x. And if I want to solve for x, I'll divide by 2. Okay, that's where they're getting the negative 3. So that's how they're doing it. They just found the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Okay, sounds good. So now that we have two points, x-intercept and y-intercept, we can figure out the slope of the line. So we'll use this little formula here. The one that we've seen so many times, we're getting really tired of it by now, right? So y2... um. I guess, let's see, let me write let me write those two points again. Remember we said the first thing we found was the y-intercept, 0, 6. And then we found the x-intercept, negative 3, 0. So let me see, I'm going to label those guys. Let's say the first one's x1, y1, and the second point's x2, y2. And then we'll fill those guys in this formula here and simplify. So y2, which one was that? The y-value of the second point was 0 minus y1, that's the y value of the first point, 6, over the x value of the second point, x2 is negative 3, minus x1, which was 0. So that's, okay, you got negative 6 over negative 3. But negative 6 over negative 3 is 2. So the slope must be 2. 
But you notice, what was the equation of this line? It was y equals 2x plus 6. And that's kind of suspiciously interesting that we got a slope of 2. And where, where did 2 come from? Notice that the number in front of x was the slope. Hmm. And we get actually very lucky in these equations because we can make a generalization. So if you ever have an equation of the form, like it shows here, y equals mx plus b. And notice they put an m in front of x. Remember what m stands for. m is always the slope. So if you have of the form y equals mx plus b, for example, that one above 2x plus 6, so m and b will just be numbers. For example, in this one, m is 2, b is 6. So what they're saying here is that if you have an equation of that form, make sure, you know, you, it looks like y is isolated here. So as long as y is by itself, it looks like, you know, y equals mx plus b, then it'll have slope m. So they're saying whatever the coefficient of x is in that equation will be the slope. And the y-intercept will always be 0, comma, whatever that constant term is at the end of the equation. So isn't that nice? So that's, that, that seems like, I know, a lot of information thrown at you, but let's just see, the, well, really, to take away from that is what we'll see in this next example. Let's see, oops, I went too far, sorry about that. This last, or this third example here, this will really drive it home, I think. So remember what it said above, it said, if you have y equals mx plus b, so your, your, your equation of your line is in that form, then m is the slope, so all you have to do is identify what's the number that's the coefficient of x, and then 0, comma, b is the y-intercept. So you just say 0, comma, all right, what's that constant term at the end of the equation? And that's it. So in this example, they just want us to practice that. Let's see. They want us to take each of these equations and then find the slope and y-intercept of each of the lines. So here in this first example, we have y equals... Oh, I forgot the x, sorry. Negative 5 halves x plus 2. Or sorry, plus 1. Negative 5 x... 5 halves x plus 1. So like it says in the directions there, it says that whatever the coefficient of x is, in this case, negative 5 halves, is going to be your slope. Okay, so that's our slope. We got that. And then they said 0, comma b is your y-intercept. And remember, b is just the number that's adding at the end of the equation. So it looks like a 1 here. And that's it. That's how simple it is. So if, as long as your equation is of that form, where y is isolated, y equals everything else on the right side, the coefficient of x is your slope, like we saw here, and then 0, comma, whatever that constant term is adding at the end is going to be the y-intercept, 0, comma, that thing. So it's really nice. There's not really a lot you have to do. And notice that they didn't ask us to, but if they had said, okay, now graph this equation, we've, we've done that above in this, a couple previous examples from this. If you're given the slope and the y-intercept, all we'd have to do is plot this y-intercept, and then do the rise over run thing to find another point. So this is really a nice way to graph a line. It's really easy to identify what's the y-intercept, what's the slope, and all that stuff. Okay, let's try this next one. Part B, but notice in part B, you don't have y isolated. <clears throat> so you got to be careful. You must isolate y. Isolate y. If necessary. In part A, it wasn't necessary because Y was already isolated. They were really nice to us. But in part B and part C, they're saying, all right, you have to do a little hard work. Isolate Y. So I, I can isolate Y by just moving the 5X to the other side. Since it's a negative 5X, I'm going to add it over to the right side. And that way, Y will be by itself because negative 5X and 5X add up to nothing. Y equals, okay, now what do we have? So, you know, I could write 9 plus 5x, but remember, you want it to look more like this guy up here, mx plus b. So I'm going to write the x term first, 5x, and then the 9. That way it looks a lot more like y equals mx plus b. And now I think I can identify everything. The slope is the coefficient of x, which is 5 now, and the y-intercept is 0, comma, b is the number adding at the end, so 9. There we go. Okay, we got it. It took a little work, but it wasn't too bad. You just got to keep that in mind that, yeah, this is a nice, easy way to identify the slope and y-intercept, but y better be by itself. If it's not by itself, you got to make it, you know, get it to that, that form. 
All right, so the last part of this example here, we have the equation 2x minus 3y is 4. That's going to be harder because I have to isolate y. That's going to take a few steps. So if I want to isolate y, probably the first thing I want to do is move this 2x over. And since it's a positive 2x, I'm going to subtract it to get rid of it. All right, that way, of course, 2x minus 2x is nothing. But now y is not quite isolated. I still have a negative 3 in the front of it. I'll have to get rid of. And on the right side, I could write 4 minus 2x, but I want it to look more like mx plus b. So I'm going to write negative 2x plus 4 instead. So you want to keep in mind that you want it to look more like y equals mx plus b. Okay, now my last step is i got to get rid of that negative 3. Since negative 3 is being multiplied by y, I'll divide by it, and that should get rid of it. And I have a choice. On the right side, I could divide the entire right side by negative 3, or what would be more useful probably is divide each term separately by negative 3. That's going to be a lot easier. So if, yeah, if you ever want to divide both sides of an equation by something, you can just divide the entire left, the entire right side by that number, but it's more useful usually to just divide every separate term by that number. That'll make it easier. Okay, that way the left side is going to just be y, since you're divided, you know, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1. On the right side we have a negative 2 over negative 3. That's positive 2 over 3. And then the x. And then you have, for the constant term, positive 4 divided by negative 3. I mean, that doesn't go in evenly, but a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So I'll write it as a total of negative 4 thirds. Instead of positive 4 over negative 3, it's kind of not, not pretty and not finished. So I'm going to simplify it. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. All right, now it's in that form. That's y equals mx plus b. So okay, remember m, the slope, is the number in front of x, or the coefficient. That's 2 thirds. So you got that. And I, you notice that I wouldn't have recognized that if I left the original you know, the equation as it was to begin with. I would think, oh, maybe the slope is 2, because it looks like that's the coefficient of x. But the slope is only the coefficient of x if you have it in the form where y is by itself. So I really had to get it to that form that I have in the box there. And then your y-intercept, it's going to be the point 0, comma, whatever your constant term is. And I think this is the first time, notice our constant term is a negative number. Then so I have to include that in there, it's negative 4 thirds. So okay, we got those two pieces of information. All right, now I think we kind of know, no matter how the equation is given to you, if you're given, like in part A, you're given, you're given the equation where y is already by itself, then the slope and the y-intercept are really easy to find. They're just kind of sitting there waiting for you. But in part B and part C, you're given the equation of a line, and it's not very pretty, but you can make it, you can make it nice by getting y by itself, and then you can find the slope and y-intercept. So at this point, we know if you're given any equation of a line, we will be able to, to find the slope and y-intercept, because we just did it with these three examples. Okay, so now we know what to do. Let's see. I think we're getting closer to really getting good at these problems here and being able to graph lines by being given an equation. All right, let's look at the next example. Now they're talking about, they're saying a line has slope negative 3 sevenths. Okay. Maybe I'll remind myself that's m, you know? That kind of helps sometimes. If they say the word slope, it's good to remember that means m. And if they say m, it's good to remind yourself that means slope to, to associate the two things. And then they said the y-intercept is 0, 13. Maybe I'll remind myself that means 0, b is 0, 13. Because now they're kind of going backwards. So in the last example, they gave us the equation, and they wanted us to give them the slope and the y-intercept. But in this problem, it's going backwards. They're saying, oh, now you know the slope and the y-intercept, and you do not know the equation. So we're kind of going to work backwards. Well, we know that the equation of a line, like we saw above, it looks like y equals mx plus b. So really, all you have to know is the slope and the y-intercept and fill them in. So it's prob it sounds like this example would be difficult, but it's not really. All you have to do is fill in what we know. So I know m, the slope is negative 3 sevenths. So I'm going to replace that there. So it looks like it's going to be y equals negative 3 sevenths x plus, and then whatever your b value is. But it looks like here b is 13. Because b is always just the y value of the y, the y uh, intercept. And that's it. So I think sometimes it's kind of hard to know when you're done, but you know you have the equation. Maybe this will help. 
you have the equation of a line if x and y are the only variables. That's how you know you're done with a problem like this, because you know the, the kind of the gener generic looking equation is y equals mx plus b. But that's not specific enough. It's, there's three variables there. There's y, there's m, there's x, there's b. But if you want a specific equation of a line, you better replace m and b with something so that the only variables left are x and y. And that's how you know you're done. You say, okay, that's perfect. That's the equation of a line. I'm done. Okay, sounds good. So kind of, we're getting closer to what we really want to do in this section. Um, but this last example is kind of a good, good thing to remember too. <coughs> Excuse me. It kind of relates the slope and y-intercept to the graph of the line. So this one, they gave us the graph of the line, and then they want us to find the equation. So I haven't seen this before, you know, in this section, but I'm thinking, okay, in the last example, they wanted the equation of the line also. And I remember we used this little formula, y equals mx plus b. And that's probably the most important form. That is the most important formula in this whole section, or this whole chapter, actually. So that's a good one to commit to memory. Maybe you even want to get a tattoo of that somewhere, right? That'd be kind of awesome. No, nah, it wouldn't. It'd be kind of silly. No, it'd be awesome. <laughs> Who am I kidding? <laughs> okay. So we're going to want to use that. So what, like in the last one, what I need is to figure out what is the slope here, and then what is the y-intercept. So it looks like, I think the easiest thing to find is the y-intercept, because remember, that's just the y, v is the y-value of the y-intercept. And if I have the graph, all I have to do is look, where does that graph intersect the y-axis? Right here, so this, this is your y-intercept. Okay, what point is that? Zero comma, I mean, they didn't label the, the axes, but I'm assuming that's negative one, because it's only down one on that grid. All right, so we got b. That means b is negative 1. So we could fill that into the formula here for b if we wanted to. But the next thing we have to find is the slope. So if I'm given a graph, like we saw before, to figure out the slope, you have to go from one point to another and count how far up did you go and how far right did you go. So I'm going to see. Okay, I'm going to try to figure out. Slope is the rise divided by the run. Oops, run. But I only have one point so far. I'm going to try to look at this graph and see... Is there another point on this line that looks like it It kind of hits at a nice value? I kind of notice right here, this guy, for example, that hits at, what is that? That'll be at 3, and then it's above 2 on the x-axis. Those are kind of nice values. I probably wouldn't choose one like, I don't know, for example, this guy down here. Because although that looks like a pretty clear y value, it looks like it's at negative 4. That's kind of a weird x value. It's not nice. It's kind of in between 2. So it doesn't, actually, it doesn't really matter which second point you chose. I happen to choose this one kind of in the top right quadrant here. But you could have chosen any one as long as it landed right on one of the corners of these grids, you know? These guys right here. So you would get the same equation of the line, believe it or not. As long as you chose a nice... Yeah, it landed on a nice corner. So now I, all I have to do is look at between those two points, how far up and how far right did I go. So I might as well start from that first point we found, 0, negative 1. From that point, oops, from that point up to the next one, how far up is that? That's one, two, three, I think that's four. Four units up, is that true? Yeah, from negative one to zero. Yeah, 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 okay. So I went up four. How about how many did I go right in that direction? I went two. Is that true? Yeah, from the y-axis over to two. All right, we got it. So we rose four, and we ran two to get from one point to the other. We can simplify that, of course. The slope is 4 over 2, that's 2. Okay, that was a little more work than, I, than the last example. But now we're ready. We can find the equation by just substituting the value of m we just found and the value of b that we found a little earlier in this problem. Okay, y equals mx plus b. Let's see. The slope we just found was 2. So I can go ahead and replace that where m was. And I remember a little while back we found that the y-intercept was b is negative 1. Ooh, so I shouldn't have put a plus there. I should put a mi- or sorry, yeah, minus. Oopsies. I got a little ahead of myself. So it'll be 2x minus 1. There we go. That's the equation of a line. Interesting. So that's good to know. In this section, it's- we're gonna- the main thing we're focusing on now, or what we're building up to in this section is 
how to graph a line using the slope and y-intercept. But in the next section, actually, we'll be doing a lot more of this, that, like the one we just did, example 5, where we're the ones that have to find the equation of the line. They give us some information, and we have to find the equation. We'll do a lot of that in the next section. But in this section, the main focus here is supposed to be you're given the equation of a line like we see in these coming examples. Oops, example 8 and 9 here. Oh, sorry, 8 and 9. Getting ahead of myself. <laughs> example 6 and 7. And they want us to take this equation and graph the line. So let's just start out. I think it's just really, this, these, problems, these two problems are putting together what we've learned above in this section, putting it all into one problem. So okay. In example 6, we have this equation, y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4. And they want us to graph it. So one of the very first things we learned in this section is, in order to graph a line, all you need to know is the y-intercept. So if we can identify that, that would be great. And then also the slope. And if we have those two things, all we have to do to graph it is plot the y-intercept, plot and then we'll use the slope to find another point. But another thing we learned in this section is if you're given the equation that the constant term, for in this one it's 4, that's going to be the y value of the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 0, 4, since the, that number is staring me right in the face. And then the slope is the coefficient of x. It's negative 2 thirds. And that's really all we need. So like we said, the first thing you want to do is plot the y-intercept. The point 0, 4 would be right here on the y-axis. Perfect. Okay this, okay, this is the first time, though, notice, graphing a line, we have not seen a negative slope. So the question is, you know, when I, when I do my rise and run, I'm trying to rise something, run something, which of those is going to be negative? Because I see a negative in my slope here. Am I going to rise a negative number or run a negative number? The thing is, you have the freedom to put the negative wherever you want. You can put it on the 2, you can put it on the 3, you just can't put it on both. You have to just give it to either the numerator or the denominator. And for me, I never I want I try not to confuse myself as often as I can. So I just this is what I always do. I I just always put the negative in the numerator. Just so I don't forget the numerator. So I'm going to rewrite the slope. Slope is going to be now instead of a 2 thirds with a negative in the front, I'm going to give the negative to the 2 and let the 3 stay as it was. I think that's, a, that's just a good way to do it. It's, it's less confusing if you just remember, okay, you see a negative slope, just make the numerator negative, and that's it. Just make sure, you know, if you're thinking, why not both? What if you make the denominator and the numerator negative? A negative over a negative is a positive, actually. So if you give the negative to both, you've changed it from a negative slope to a positive slope. So make sure, whatever you do, don't give a negative to the top and the bottom, just the top. Okay, so I think we're doing good. We, remember, we already plotted the y-intercept. That was 0, 4. And now we're going we're gonna to use the slope to rise and run. So I'm thinking of, okay, negative 2. That was the numerator. That's, we're going to rise that many. And then run 3. This is the first time we've seen this. Notice now the rise is negative. So rise, actually that word is kind of misleading. Because when I hear the word rise, I always think up. I never think down. But really, rise... It could be up or down, depending what your sign is. And since our sign is negative, I'm going downward, because on the y-axis, downward is the negative direction. And then run. That one I don't have a hard time remembering that's left or right, because you can run any direction, left or right. But keep in mind, rise, it could be negative or positive, so you could be going up or down. But since run is positive 3, I look at the x-axis and say, oh, um, the positive direction is to the right. I'll be going down 2 and 3 to the right. Um, if, if it helps, it, it might be good to write that down. You want to go down 2 and then right 3. That kind of narrows it down. All right. Now i got my plan. I'm ready to go. From that y-intercept that was at 0, 4, I'm going to go down 2, okay, this direction, and then go right 3. 1, 2, 3. I think I would land right here. You think so? So keep in mind, I think a mistake people make too is they'll plot the y-intercept and then when they use the slope, they'll start at the origin. They'll say, oh, from here, I'm going to rise, what is it, 2, down 3. But that's not how it, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to plot the y-intercept and then from the y-intercept, that's where you plot, or you go rise and run. So make sure you don't rise and run from the origin. You rise and run from that first point you drew. 
now that we have two points, I'm going to connect them, and that's it. It's a beautiful slope. It seems like a lot of work, but once you do a lot of these examples, you'll say, oh, actually, this is not so bad. You get the hang of it and everything. All right, and then like a, a quick check that I kind of like to do, like we mentioned before, we had a negative slope. So this better be a downhill walk. So imagine you're walking from left to right. Would you be walking, would you be sloping downward? Yeah, negative slope means you should be sloping downward. That's a good sign, but if for some reason I had graphed a line that was going upward, like this guy here, I would say, oh, something's wrong, because my slope was supposed to be negative, but the line that goes up from left to right has a positive slope. So it's a good check to make sure, okay, negative slope, it should be going downward. Stuff like that. All right, I think we're doing good. Let's see the next one here. They want us to graph another line, but you notice this one does not have, it's not in the form y equals mx plus b. So that's the main thing to remember, I think, is you can't identify the y-intercept and the slope until the equation's in this form. We got kind of lucky in the previous example, example 6, because it already had y by itself, y equals stuff. So the first thing we'll have to do, we'll have to do extra work here, is isolate y. We did not have to do that in the last one, because someone had already isolated it for me. But oh well, you got to do what you got to do. So looking at this guy, 2x minus 3y equals 9, I think the first thing you would have to do to isolate y is subtract 2x. Since it's a positive 2x, you would subtract it to get rid of it. So what would be left here? Negative 3y equals, and then as, as we've seen before, I could write 9 minus 2x, but since I'm trying to make it look more like mx plus b, I'm going to write the negative 2x and then the plus 9, just because I'm wanting it to look like y equals something x plus something. All right, y is almost isolated. Now I just have to divide by negative 3. And like we said before, it's probably easier to divide every individual term by that number rather than the entire left side, the entire right side. That would leave me with y by itself on the left side. On the right side, you notice you have in front of x, negative 2, and then you're dividing by negative 3. Well, that's a negative divided by a negative, so it's a positive 2 thirds x. And then the constant term here, you have 9 divided by negative 3. That's negative 3, right? Yeah. So that wasn't too bad, actually, huh? Solving for x. Or, sorry, solving for y. Now that we have it in the right form, I'm going to try to say, what's my y-intercept here? 0, comma, b. Okay, remember, 0, comma, the constant term. And be careful, don't just put 3, because it has to be this. You have to keep the sign with the number. If I put 0, comma, 3, I get the wrong line. It should be 0, comma, negative 3. So in the last example, you know, we had a positive 4. That's why the y-intercept was, was just 0, 4. This time, though, it's a negative 3, so we've got to keep that as part of our y-intercept. So the first thing I'll do is plot that point, and then I'm going to use the slope. And the slope would be whatever is the coefficient of x, 2 thirds. And I definitely had to solve for y, because the slope, now that I realize the slope is 2 thirds, that wasn't obvious from the very onset when I looked at the original equation. Okay, so remember, we want to start with the, the y-intercept, and then we'll use the slope. So I'm going to plot that point first. 0, comma, negative 3, that guy is down here. And then I'm going to look at the slope, okay. I got lucky on this one because the rise and the run, they're both positive. 2 is positive, so I'm going to rise, that's up, since up is the positive direction. And then I'm running 3, 3 is positive also, so I'll be going right 3. All right, so from that y-intercept we already plotted, I'm going to go up 2, and then right 3. I think that would land us right here. And then connect the dots, and there's our line. Beautiful. I think that works. Okay, so it's kind of a lot of work, especially on this one like where I had to isolate y, but again, I think the more of these you do, the better you're going to get at them. And then you're going to like this method a lot, I think even better than the previous one. All right, we're going to do a little more graphing of lines, but we're going to connect it with a new idea that we haven't seen before in this class. But this, this, will kind of, this idea right here will kind of stick with us for the rest of this chapter. We'll see these um, quite a bit. Okay, so we've got kind of new definitions here. You've, I'm sure you've heard the word parallel before. But two lines are parallel if they never intersect. So notice you have a picture of those guys here. Here are two lines. They're just going to go... They're kind of go in the same direction but never intersect because they're, I guess what you think about it, they're sloping at the same level, right? 
Like if I was a little person walking up this this slope, and then I was a little person walking up that slope, it'd be the same, you know, one of them wouldn't be more difficult to walk up than the other. They'd be the exact same difficulty, which is why the, the easiest way to identify parallel lines is if, if they have the same slope. Okay, so that's parallel lines. Then what else? What's I guess the opposite of a parallel or a pair of parallel lines are perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines, they're lines that intersect at a right angle or a 90 degree angle. I'm sure you've seen that before. If you kind of remember, um, I'm sure you've seen the Pythagorean theorem. You remember that guy? It was like a squared plus b squared equals c squared, maybe. Well, anyway, the Pythagorean theorem it requires you have a triangle where there's a right angle in the middle. That just means that you have to have a 90 degree angle inside. So, you know, a 90 degree angle is just like a straight, like two things, they intersect each other perfectly. Kind of like if you look at around the room that you're in, you look at the wall and the, and the floor. The floor and the wall intersect each other at a 90 degree angle. So anyway, so if you have two lines that are intersecting each other at a 90 degree angle like that, or a right angle, then they call them per perpendicular lines. And this is more complicated to tell if two lines are perpendicular, if, especially if you're given their equations. Because in parallel lines, they have the same slope. That's easy to identify. This one's kind of more confusing. It says, the slopes are reciprocals. And remember, reciprocal, that means you take a fraction and you flip it upside down. So they're reciprocals, but they have opposite signs as well. So an example of that would be, let's say one of them had slope 3 halves. Well, then the other guy's slope is, well, the reciprocal of 3 halves is 2 thirds because you flip the fraction upside down. But like it says, they have to have opposite signs. So notice one of them's positive and one of them's negative. Ah, so that's harder to identify, but yeah, so if someone said, hey, I found two lines and one of their slopes is three halves, the other one's slope is negative two thirds, you say, all right, I don't even know what those lines look like, but I already know they're perpendicular. Because I know that perpendicular lines have reciprocal slopes with opposite signs. Okay. So let's see if we can do some examples using those. So this example says, without graphing these lines, let's determine whether the following pairs of lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. That's kind of interesting, huh? Because graphing two lines, that takes a while. Because notice, okay, in part A, for example, you have one, the equation of one line here, y plus 8 is negative 6x, that's some kind of line, I don't know what it looks like. But then you have another line you want to compare it to, negative x plus 6y equals 5. So I could graph both lines and then, you know, see, does it look like they're parallel? Does it look like they're perpendicular? Um, but that's, that would take too long. So what you're going to want to do in these problems is find the slope of each line. And then you're going to see if it's true what it says about parallel lines. Remember what it said above? Parallel lines have the same slope. So if you figure out the slope of both of your lines and they're the exact same thing, then they're parallel lines. But if they don't have the same slope, you can check to see if they have the property that perpendicular lines have over here. That their slopes are negative, or you know, they're reciprocals of each other with opposite signs. But if you look at those slopes and neither of those things is happening, you know, you say, okay, those slopes are not the same, that's for sure. And also, the slopes are not reciprocals with opposite signs. So if neither of those things is happening, then it's, like it says here, neither perpendicular nor parallel. Alright, so the main thing is we've got to find the slopes and then we'll just see, are they the same or are they perpendicular? So we've got to, and then unfortunately, notice that the both equations in this first example, part A, y plus 8 equals negative 6x, and the second one, if I want to identify the slope, I'm going to have to get it in that form y equals mx plus b. So again, I'm not going to have to get y by itself, although in this one it won't be so bad, right? I'll just move the 8 over and then I'll have it in that form. Let's see, y equals, and I want to make sure that the x term is first, because I want it to look like mx plus b. Oops, why did I put a plus 8? I'm losing it over here. It should be minus 8, because I subtracted it. Hello? Alright, there we go. So that was the first one. And now that I see that, I can identify the slope. Remember, the slope is the number that's in front of x, or the coefficient of x. Okay, so I got one of their slopes. Now I'm going to find the other guy's slope and then compare them. All right, what was the other equation here? The second equation we were given in part A was negative x plus 6y is 5. And I have to do the same thing. I have to isolate y. Probably the first thing I would do in this one is I'm going to add x to the other side. 
If I add x, then 6y is by itself. And I could write 5 equals 5 plus x, but I want to see it as mx plus b. So I'm going to write the x term before the constant term. And okay, y is still not by itself, but if I isolate it by dividing everybody by 6, that'll do it. There we go. So we're almost there. Y is by itself now. How about x over 6? So the thing is, if it's x over 6, I want it to look like mx plus b. So I want the slope to kind of be in front of the x. So that's the confusing thing. i got to figure out x over 6. Can I write that as something times x? Would it be 6 times x? Or The tricky thing is x over 6, you can write that as 1 6 times x. It's kind of hard to, I don't know, hard to think about, but you want to extract the coefficient of x. You don't want to leave it as x over 6, because that does not look like mx plus b. It has to be something times x. And 1 6 times x, that would be x over 6, because if you think about it, if you were to multiply those guys, you'd put the x over 1, multiply across, you know, 1 times x is x, 6 times 1 is 6. But you're trying to go backwards, so I'm going to rewrite it here. Alright, all that work, and I would, all I wanted to know was what was the slope here. The slope of this guy is 1 6th. So now I have to compare those two slopes. Let me see, the first slope that, of the first equation was negative 6, and the slope of the second equation was 1 6th. Okay, well first thing, that means that the, those two lines are not parallel, that's for sure. Because remember, if they were parallel, that would mean their slopes are exactly the same. Those are not the same slope. So I'm going to check for perpendicular. Okay. Are those reciprocals of each other? 6 and 1 6. Those are reciprocals, right? If you take 1 6 and you flip it upside down, that's 6 over 1, which is 6. So those two numbers are reciprocals of each other, and they have opposite signs, notice. One slope is negative, one slope is positive. They, uh, so they are perpendicular. They are reciprocals, or I could say reciprocal slopes with opposite signs. That is true, yeah, because again, if I take one of them, say 1 6th here, you flip it upside down, that's 6 over 1, which is 6. So they are reciprocals, and 1 is negative and 1 is positive. Okay, so it's perpendicular, not parallel. Alright, sounds good. Let's try... Parts B and Part C are going to do the exact same thing. So it's going to get kind of tedious here. Let's try this guy. I'm going to focus on the first equation here. we got 2x minus 5y is negative 3. And we know the drill. We're going to have to isolate y to figure out this guy's slope. So I'll move the 2x over first in, in an attempt to get y by itself. That means that negative 5y will be equal to, and I definitely want to write negative 2x and then negative 3, because I want it to look like y equals mx plus b. And then, where are we here? If I isolate y, the last step will be divide everybody by negative 5. Alright, then y will be by itself, and I'll be able to identify the slope. So let's see, y equals negative 2 over negative 5, that's positive 2 over 5, x then you have negative 3 over negative 5, that's 2 negatives divided, there's a positive 3 over 5. Although that 3 over 5 doesn't really matter for this problem, huh? All that I care about is the slope. The slope is the coefficient of x, so 2 fifths. Okay. So there's one slope. I'll compare it to the other guy's slope, and we'll see kind of if they're the same, then they're parallel. If they're reciprocals with opposite signs, then they're perpendicular. But if neither of those things is going on, then it's neither. So now let me look at that. Uh, the second equation in part B it was 5x minus 2y equals 8. And I'll isolate y for that guy. First thing I need to do to isolate y is subtract 5x. And I'll be closer to having y by itself. Negative 2y equals, and I for sure want to write negative 5x and then the 8. Because want, you want it to look more like mx plus b. And then the last step would be divide by negative 2. Every single term divided by negative 2, and let's see what we get from that. y would be equal to, you have negative 5 over negative 2, that's a positive 5 over 2, x. Then you have 8 over negative 2, that's negative 4. Okay, that means the slope is the coefficient of x, that's 5 halves. Okay, so let me compare those guys. The two slopes, they're not the same, huh? 
So first thing I can say is that they're not parallel. They look almost the same, but they're reciprocals of each other, right? Um, two fifths and five halves. So to be to be um, parallel, they'd have to be the exact same slope. They'd have to be like two fifths and two fifths, or negative ten and negative ten. Well, those are reciprocals, but be careful because you notice, okay, these guys they are reciprocals of each other, five halves and two fifths, but they don't have they don't have opposite signs. Don't have. Opposite signs, so they're not perpendicular either. So they're neither, neither parallel nor perpendicular. So be careful. I mean, perpendicular. You not only have to have reciprocals like we have; they also have to have opposite signs. So if either of those things is not happening, say either they're not reciprocals or they don't have opposite signs, then that's not perpendicular. Yeah, because notice our two slopes are both positive. It would have to be that one of them is positive and one of them is negative in order for it to be um, whoops, per perpendicular lines. All right, let's try this last one here. And I'm sure you're getting kind of tired of this. <laughs> but we'll move on to bigger and better things in the next section. So, okay, let's look at this top equation. You know what we have to do. Isolate y and try to figure out the slope. All right, so to isolate y here, look, at notice they threw the y on the left side. Usually you see y on the right side, but oh well. I want to isolate y, so the first thing I want to do is probably move this 4x over here. That's getting me closer to having y by itself. So that way 2y is isolated. It's equal to, I'm going to write 4x plus 7 because you want the x term first. And then the last thing I'll do to get this guy in the right form is divide everybody by 2 to get y by itself. So it must be y equals, you got 4 over 2, that's 2x. Plus 7 over 2, that doesn't reduce, so you could just leave it like that. Okay, now that I have y by itself, I can say, alright, slope is what? The coefficient of x, which is 2. Okay, so we found one guy's slope. We'll find the other guy's slope, compare them. Alright, the other guy, what was the second equation here? 2x minus 1 equals y. Hey, look at that, y is already isolated. I feel like it's my birthday today. What the heck? Yay! So that means I can just say, all right, the coefficient of x, well, maybe I'll remind myself y. y is already isolated. There's no need to do any algebra to try to get rid of everything else. That means the coefficient of x is the slope, and the coefficient of x is 2. Ooh, you notice, look at those two slopes. Those are the exact same slope. That means they're parallel. Whee! Whew, okay. Sorry, that was that's this section is pretty pretty beefy. Um, they kind of throw a lot of concepts in one section, but um, hopefully it all made sense. It's a lot to throw at you, I know. I think the more of these problems you try on your own, the more it'll make sense, and you'll be ready to start the next section. And, and we're almost done with this chapter, actually. We'll be moving on to the next one. So if you're getting tired of graphing lines, don't worry. We'll move on pretty soon. But thanks for paying attention and. Sorry if you got a little bored or got a little tedious, um, but hopefully it all made some sort of sense. And again, I think if it didn't make perfect sense, the, if you do your homework problems, it'll make more sense. Okay, well hopefully you guys are doing well, things are making more sense. I'll see you in the next video.